There's a surprising history behind one of Judaism's most famous and most powerful prayers. The Kaddish is thought to have originated in temple times. It was recited after a rabbinic lecture, a way to remember that all those specifics of Jewish law were part of a much bigger picture. Many scholars think that the lecturer would end his talk by freestyling some words of praise in Aramaic, the language of the day. According to this theory, the Kaddish was the result of one such freestyling, integrating language from the books of Ezekiel, Daniel, Job, and Psalms. Eventually, these particular words stuck and became standard. The Kaddish didn't become associated with death and mourning until the 7th century. Probably what happened was this. If a scholar died, someone would teach some of his wisdom at the funeral, maybe as part of the eulogy. Since Torah was being taught, then they'd say the Kaddish afterwards. But it wasn't long before some people began to get offended. Wait, you said Kaddish at that guy's funeral, but not our beloved deceased? What, are you trying to say that our beloved deceased wasn't a great scholar? So, it began to become standard to teach Torah at everybody's funeral. Then, eventually, saying Kaddish itself became part of the standard mourning practice. As Rabbi Maurice Lamb put it, the Kaddish serves as an epilogue to human life, just as, historically, it served as an epilogue to Torah study. It's a way for mourners to get into a space of praise, even in their grief. It's a way to honor the life of the deceased, to sanctify God's name as part of affirming their relative's legacy. And we need a quorum of Jews in order to say Kaddish, because when we're mourning, we should be in community. Eventually, the Kaddish moved its way into every prayer service, serving as something of a punctuation mark that demarcates different sections of the liturgy. The words of the Kaddish don't actually talk about study at all. Rather, they're praises to God and hopes for divine sovereignty and peace. And not just praises, but heaps and piles of praises. Blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, adored and lauded may be the name of the Holy One, blessed be God. It's a lot. It's meant to be a lot. It's meant to overwhelm you. It's about taking you to this place of glory and exaltation and not holding back at all. Let it all out. But the real power of the prayer was thought to be in the congregational response to the first paragraph. Yehei shmei rabba mevorach le'elam o'meil maya. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi asserts that he who responds, Amen, may God's great name be blessed with all his might, his decreed sentence is torn up. Our response matters. We're not meant to stand passively on the sidelines of all of this praise, but to enter into the space of profound awe and glory ourselves. And to that, let us say, Amen. Amen.